What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're doing something a little different. It's the holiday season, and some people do a prime rib, some people do a whole turkey, some people are looking for something different, and I've got you covered. So in these bags, I've got the star of the show, co-star of the show as it may be. These are five pound turkey breasts. What we're doing here is I've got three of the turkey brining kits from at bbq.com. They actually have four of them. I have three, the other one's got a little heat in it. And as you guys know, I'm a wimp. If you don't know that, that means you're not subscribed, so do that below. But what these are, these are paired kind of tastings, if you will. So we've got, the first one is turkey bath that's traditional lemon and thyme and it's paired with Kettleman's Grill Ranchero. I actually use this all the time so that's why that one's in there because I have some that's open and then the next one is turkey brine that's the classic holiday flavor that's apple rosemary and sage. I've tried this one I have not tried that one so I'm excited to try it and that one's paired with uh, Kettleman's Grill Trail Dust. Now these are a brine. Now <laughs> all cooks don't go as planned. And in this case, I ran into the same issue. So let me tell you how these are supposed to work and then I'll tell you what I did. So with these guys, if you read the back of the label, we essentially what we wanna do is we wanna use one of these, one quarter cup, oh, I'm sorry, one half cup of kosher salt and one uh, gallon of water. You can put this in a big bag. Obviously these are gallon bags, so I did not have a big enough bag and I didn't have enough room for a brining bucket, uh, but if you don't have a brining bucket, those are handy. I will put a picture of one over here, uh, but I didn't have room in my beer fridge because I've got too much beer. It's the holiday time of year and it's filled. So I had to kind of use these. I also ran into another issue. I picked these up from the butcher thinking that they would be fresh and they were frozen and they came out of one of their like deep freezer freezers and these things were so frozen i was like you know what i'm okay i will put them in cold water they'll defrost in a couple hours maybe three will be fine seven and a half hours later last night late very late it was actually about 12 30. Uh, these were still frozen in the middle and i was like I, I can't wait any longer so what i did is i took a knife and i split them apart i cut off all the skin. You don't want skin on something like this. It's just gonna get rubbery, especially when you dry brine it, or sorry, when you wet brine it, it's just gonna get uh, chewy and you don't want it for a breast. So cut all that off. I threw these guys in. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to brine one hour per pound. These are five uh, pounds. Obviously, if it's almost one o'clock in the morning by the time I'm done, I am not getting up at six o'clock to start turkey. So what I did is I treated these more like a marinade and I backed off on my salt. Uh, so I probably have, I would say, less than a quarter of a, of a, a cup. I, I probably, it's probably around an eighth of a cup. I went really light on, on the salt uh, because these are, they really stayed in twice as long. So that was the theory behind it. I haven't done it this way before. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I used one of these and not quite a gallon of water, obviously. So they should be full of flavor. So I think we're gonna be okay there. Uh, and because we got some salt in there, we're still gonna get some flavor. The other thing that I did, these are my pizza containers that I used to make dough in, just in case, not that I don't trust stick Ziploc, but I was not waking up to a mess in my fridge. So I put these guys in there just like that. And I'm actually gonna open these guys up in there so that I can do it outside and not worry about losing all the moisture. But what I did here is this one, as you can tell by the colors, the lemon and thyme, and this one, is the apple and sage and rosemary. Uh, both I think are gonna be delicious. I'm actually very really excited to try that one. And what we've done now is we've just got some hickory pellets. We're rolling it 225. Now, if you wanna do this on a whole turkey, let me give you a couple tips. What I would do is I would get yourself a big bag. I th yeah, I, you're gonna want, um, I don't know, you have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so helpful. Uh, I have a brining bucket, so when I do a whole turkey, I put it in the brining bucket, and usually what I'll do is I'll put it in my cooler and I'll just surround it by ice and I'll leave it in the garage overnight. Uh, but you can get a bag, enough, a bag big enough for a turkey. And what I would do is you're probably gonna use both of these, and you're gonna use two gallons of water, you're gonna use one cup of salt, and you're gonna throw your whole turkey in there. Now here's what I would do though. I would do that two days in advance, if it's a 16 pound turkey, put it in the brine for 16 hours. And then I would get yourself a rack and I would put my turkey on there. I would uh, try and dry out the inside and then I would let it sit at least for a day, 
24 hours to try and dry out that skin. The air circulation in your fridge will do that. And then that way you'll be able to save your skin and still get some crispy skin. If you go right from a brine to it, you're gonna be pretty hard pressed to do that, uh, even if you dial up the temperature. So there's a little quick tip. You can use this exact same process if you're doing a whole turkey. Let's uh, glove up and have a little look here. We are gonna season these guys up. Now I've got some hickory rolling at 225. I'm not gonna roll super, super low on the temperature. Here's why. If you do these guys long and slow, that top layer of, of meat is gonna get a little um, tough. And a lot of times what I do is I end up cutting that off and eating the tender meat on the inside. So we're rolling at 225, so we're gonna get a little bit of smoke in there, uh, but we're also gonna do a couple things to help keep them moist near the end here. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to look at the lemon and thyme one. I've got a little rack here and <laughs> we're gonna get this out of the bag. There we go. Now you can see what's going on here. Now what we're gonna do here Get a ranchero, and I'm gonna start with the bottom. Now I've got this on a rack here. Reason for that is, is that we wanna let this drain a little bit. I've got tons of flavor in it. And like I said, I pulled all the skin off. I did cut off some of the, you know, the bottom of the skin here that's white. And again, it was still a little, a little frozen. So it's not the prettiest job in the world. However, we've got some ranchero here. We're gonna start on the bottom and we'll give this a nice coating. And if you haven't used this ranchero, I use it a lot. It's a savory rub. It's got some good flavor to it. Don't forget the sides here. It's like Bradley's here with me. <laughs> yes, I watch a lot of Chud's barbecues. I'm sure most of you do. Funny guy. And we'll give this guy a good coating on the top of this as well. And luckily with our brine, it's nice and damp. So our seasoning here is gonna stick, no problem. We will let that sit for just a second here. A little moist, I'm gonna pack this on. Now the beauty of doing something like this is look, now you could get two, three, four breasts and you can do all different flavors and slice it and everyone gets something a little different. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw this guy on the top shelf. Now, so you can see at 225, we're still getting a decent amount of smoke, but we're gonna cook a little quicker so we don't get that skin on the top all dried out. Or not the skin, but the top of the meat. All right, so we'll keep this nice and bunched together. Close it up and keep our heat in there. And we'll get on to the next one here. I've already gone ahead and opened up my trail dust. Yeah. The trail dust is a new one for me. I haven't tried it yet. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. As I mentioned, the lemon and thyme one I've actually tried on my offset. Mm, that does smell good. That's one I have not tried yet. Same, same process. Put a nice coat on this on the top, or the bottom, sorry. Do the top last, that's your presentation side. Now this one is a lot coarser than the ranchero. Separate any meat here and just try and get it all over. Pretty thick coating everywhere. Just cause I'm gonna lift that up like that. There we go. Let's get this guy on the pit as well. I'm gonna leave us a little bit of a gap between these guys, push it together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these guys go for a little bit. Now I'm gonna go for about an hour at 225, get a little bit of extra smoke in there. Now we're using hickory. Poultry generally takes smoke fairly quickly, so we don't need a ton of it. You can overpower it. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna go for an hour at 225, and then I'm gonna crank it up probably in the neighborhood of 250 or 275. And uh, we're gonna do a couple things in the last half of the cook just to make sure we get a nice juicy product at the end. I'll bring you back a little bit. So now that we've got our mess cleaned up, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our probes in our turkey. Now the one thing you gotta know about poultry is that 
if you overcook it, it's terrible. You ruin it very, very quickly, right? It's not very forgiving. So this is one of those cooks where if you if you cook in a dry turkey or some dry chicken, you're taking it up too high. So use your probes. You've got the technology. Use your thermopen. Use a meter if you've got one of those. Um, I've got all three, but today I'm going to use these so I can look at it from my phone. And I'm actually going to send a warning. And I used these last night for a cook, so they were already out. So we got them. What we're going to do is we're going to plug in Plug in probe number one, and then we'll open this up. Open up our little door here. We'll go through, and we're gonna put this right in the middle here. And remember, don't make sure it's in the center of the meat, so you don't have to go in too far there, right? Get probe number two here, same thing. And the same thing with this, we'll put this right in the middle, like so. Make sure you close your door, keep your heat in there. And now what we'll do, so I don't even have to think about it, is we will grab the Yoder app here, courtesy of a fireboard, and we will set our probe temps. And I'm gonna set these to 155 for each of them. That'll give us lots of notice, 155 and we're done. I'll see you in a little bit. It's been one hour, let's have a look. Not a lot has changed in one hour, but here's why we're looking already. I mentioned the one thing about a turkey breast is you can get that top layer of skin and it can get hard, which typically what'll happen is I'll just peel it away and I'll eat all the nice juicy stuff on the inside. But we got a whole bunch of flavor on the inside, so we want to protect that. So in this guy, I've just got straight water. We're going to keep that moist. You can see we've tacked up a little bit, so I'm not worried about spraying off our seasoning, but I'm going to go a little ways away, and we're just going to add some moisture here. And again, this is straight water. Depending on what you're doing here, you could use some apple juice. And if you go to put too much on, I can start to see some of our seasoning move away. Add a little bit. I'll make sure I get all sides of it. Don't be afraid to use too much water. That's also gonna promote a little bit of smoke. And we are sitting at 91 and 93, very, very close to each other. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dial this up to 275. We've got a bunch of smoke in here. We're gonna get a little bit more. Now, as we go up in temperature, we're not gonna get as much smoke, but remember, poultry can get over smoked very quickly. We're using a little bit of a heavier wood, so that's gonna put some smoke into it. But at 275, we're gonna get that done a little quicker, and we're gonna keep spraying this probably about every half hour. I wanna keep that center moist, or sorry, not the center. The center's gonna be moist. <laughs> we wanna keep the top moist, right? And we're gonna do one trick near the end to ensure that we get a nice, tender, juicy outcome at the end, and it'll just take it over the top. I'll bring it back a little bit. We are four and a half hours in. For the last three hours, we have sprayed with just water every 30 minutes. We've been rocking it 275. It's time for our final spray. Let me bring you in so you can have a look. will be the final spray. Again, we're just using water every 30 minutes. We're sitting at 139 and 137. Now, if you're paying attention, you would have noticed that I swapped our brush around. This side of the yoder near our stack is gonna be the hotter spot as that air picks up and goes out the stack. We get a negative pressure zone and the air picks up. So the one edge of one brush was cooking a little quicker, so I just flipped them around. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let them come up to 150. More on that when we get there. It's only been half hour. It is winter, it's dark super quick. These guys are ready to pull off. Let me show you what we got. So this is the one that was done with the barbecue and the trail dust seasoning, some good color. Now, 
it's only been a total cook time of about five hours for these guys. So these are sitting at 150 right now, right? Here's what we're gonna do. I got some clarified butter, get a nice little coating on the top. It's gonna sit in the butter anyhow, but I do wanna get a nice little coating on the top, all right? Nice little coating there and a little bit more on the, the back. Now, why are we pulling off at 150? If you let this sit for 3.7 minutes at 150, it's actually long enough to kill any bacteria or anything. If you take it up to 165, it does that in 10 seconds. So what we can do is we can pull off 150, we can let it rest. In this case, we're gonna let it rest for about 25 minutes maybe 30, and it's gonna be more than long enough to kill the bacteria. It's also gonna have some carryover temp. It is cold out here, so we're gonna wrap this up super quick. It's about 35 degrees. Surprised you can't see my breath. We'll wrap that up super, super tight, right? And all that butter goodness is gonna sit on the top of it. Let's get our other one. And this one is the one that had the lemon and thyme brine with the ranchero seasoning. Good color on that as well. Put a little bit on top again. There we go. Put that upside down. Make sure you wrap it super tight. And now, we'll take these guys in, let them rest for a good 20, 30 minutes, and then it'll be tasting time. Been about 25 minutes, let's have a look. Make sure you save that butter. And that one's gonna be a rosemary and thyme one, it looks like. Talk about looking delicious. Great color. It's a little crunchy on the one side there. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Again, great color as well. Now remember, turkey's got a grain just like anything else. We can see that it's going this way on this particular one. And we can see that it's, it's going this way on this particular one. So what we'll do, I will remove my gloves so I can can hold my knife. Pieces out of there. Move that off to the side here. Couple pieces there. I don't know if it's gonna come across the camera, but you can see there's lots of moisture there. Go a little deeper inside here. Let me look. Lots of moisture there. Yeah, that smells good. Put that back here. Give myself a little piece. That one edge is a little crispy, so I'm gonna go a little deeper in here. This one too, so I can get a comparable piece. There we go, there we go. You get a whole bunch of flavor right out of the gate and then it's a little different. The smoke sneaks up on you at the end and just finishes it off. That's the barbecue one, I haven't, like I said, I haven't tried that one. My wife's gonna love that right away. A Little bit of lemon, a little bit of thyme, and the smoke just sneaks up at the end. Not overpowering, but it's like, like a nice little aftertaste. Uh, normally, you taste a little bit of smoke first and then you get the other flavors. But in this, just the way it works out, it's not over smoked, it's nicely balanced, it's absolutely delicious. 
And if you haven't tried these yet, I highly recommend you do that. If turkey's not your thing, I got you covered. I just did the ultimate 10 layers of flavor prime rib. I'll put a link down here. That's all I've got for you today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. I'll see you soon.